Hello sewing bees, I'm Suki and today I'm going to teach you how to make three easy Valentine's Day sewing projects. Now all the patterns, materials and supply information can be found in the description below. Alright, grab your machine and let's get stitching. First up is the heart envelope. Now for this project you're going to need three different materials measuring 14 by 11 inches or 35 by 28 centimeters, one for the outside, the lining, and a fusible woven interfacing. Press the fusible woven interfacing to the wrong side of the lining. Now place the outside and lining wrong sides together, fold in half, and with the heart envelope pattern piece, place it on the fold and cut both layers together. Now place the outside and lining right sides together and pin in place all the way around. Go to your sewing machine and sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around keeping in mind that you need to leave about three to four inches so that you can turn your heart envelope right side out. All right, let's do a little bit of trimming. All the way around the outside of your heart, you're gonna to wanna to do some V-shaped clippings. If you have a pair of pinky shears, this is going to make the process so much easier. Now it's time to turn your heart envelope right side out. Use the easy point and turner and of course the traditional bamboo point turner to get perfect corners and curves. Smooth out the seams as best you can, and I do what I call the roly-poly, where I'm just really rolling the seam so that it's nice and flat. And then you're going to go ahead and tuck in the opening seam allowance and give the entire heart a good press. Now let's top stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around the outside of our little heart envelope. and give your heart envelope a good press and grab the pattern piece that we used originally to cut it. Also get a marking pen. Now if you have one of these friction pens, they're super cool because you can mark on your fabric and then with the heat of the iron, it'll make it disappear. From the center over, align that vertical line that's dotted and we're gonna mark that for one of the main parts of our envelope and just repeat it on the other side. Go ahead and straighten up both lines with a ruler and your marking pen. Turn your heart to the wrong side facing up, folding along that line and give it a good press. Hold it in place with some pins or wonder clips. If you have yet to discover wonder clips, they are amazing. Be sure to check them out. I have a link in the description where you can get some. Now with the heart upside down, you're gonna take the what would be the top of the heart and align it with the fold. Replace the wonder clips and align them once again. And repeat on the other side. You're essentially creating the shape of the envelope. Now give the bottom a little press and inside. And then we're gonna head back to the sewing machine and top stitch at an eighth of an inch. You'll notice that I start a little before the end of the seam. This makes it a little easier to back stitch and make sure that my top and bottom are both secure. We 
When you're finished, clip your threads and repeat on the other side. We give the whole envelope a press one more time and let's go ahead and form the shape of the top of the envelope by tucking it inside and once again giving it a good press. Now it's time to fill your envelope with some goodies and candy and a nice little note to your loved one. Alright sewing bees, next up is the love door hanger. For this project you're going to need a cotton heart that measures 12 by 10 inches or 30 by 25 centimeters, two pieces of burlap measuring 15 by 13 inches or 38 by 33 centimeters, 20 inches of twine string or 50 centimeters, and some poly fluff stuffing. Make sure you print both pattern pieces from the website. Take the cotton piece and fold it in half wrong sides together and use the cotton pattern piece, place it on the fold, pin it around, and we're going to actually use pinking shears to cut around the outside of this to give it a little extra texture. If you don't have pinking shears, that's absolutely okay, just use your regular fabric shears. Take the two pieces of burlap fold them and take the other pattern piece that's designed for the burlap, place it on the fold, pin it in place and with a hefty duty pair of craft scissors cut all the way around. Take one of the pieces of burlap and put it aside for right now. Now we're going to be sewing down the heart and the best way to do that is to keep it in place with some spray adhesive. So on the wrong side of the cotton heart, spray with the adhesive and then place it centered within the width and the height on one of the burlap pieces. Now change your needle to a jean denim 100 by 16. This is going to help when stitching through that heavier burlap material. Now set your sewing machine up for a regular zigzag and place the edge of that cotton heart with the edge of the presser foot and sew that zigzag all the way around. Now give your heart a good press and take the other burlap piece and put the burlap pieces wrong sides together. Grab that twine and we're going to tie a double knot on each end. Measure in from the center out on both tops of the heart about three inches or seven and a half centimeters and place each end of the knot from the twine underneath the seam allowance. Now with pins, go ahead and pin all the way around and keep in mind there is going to be an opening about three inches. So I like to double pin the section where the opening is so I don't forget while I'm sewing at the machine. And you're going to stitch all the way around, back stitch at the twine and finish at the end. Again keep in mind that you're going to need to leave about a three inch opening. We're going to be stitching right on top of the previous zigzag with a new zigzag. Stitch all the way around the heart and when you get toward where the twine knot is, make sure that the knot is inside the heart area and then back stitch over that twine. That way it's nice and secure when it's hanging.
Okay, now it's time to fill our opening up with some fiber fill. I take the fiber fill and I turn it into lots of little tiny balls. That way it's easier to manage when filling up and stuffing my heart. You can also use the bamboo point turner to help get that fiber fill in there. And mush it all down and kind of give your little pillow a massage. Now take some straight pins to help keep that opening closed. Head back to your sewing machine and finish that little zigzag area. Once you're finished stitching, you can give your pillow a little massage again, and then you can go around the outside of it and remove the extra fibers and kind of twist them and tangle them up so that they get a really cool, rugged, chic effect. And when you're done with that, take those heavy duty craft scissors and cut all the way around, evening out that seam. Just make sure that you don't accidentally cut the twine handle. And now it's time to decorate your front door with your love door hanger. And last but not least, the Lots of Hearts pillow. For this project you will need two pieces of 19 by 14 inches or 48 by 35 centimeters for the front and the back. You will also need five 4 by 4 inch or 10 by 10 centimeter pieces of paper backed fusible web for the hearts and five 4 by 4 inch or 10 by 10 centimeter pieces of cotton for the hearts and 30 inches or 76 centimeters of twine string, plus some poly fluff stuffing. On the wrong side of each of the heart pieces, you're going to apply the paperback fusible web. Follow the manufacturer's pressing instructions and repeat on all five pieces. Once you're finished, you're gonna go ahead and remove the paperback part and discard it. And that will leave the fusible on the other side and do that for all the heart pieces. You can now stack them on top of one another and get the pattern piece from the website, place it on all the layers, pin it, and cut around. On each of our hearts, we need to have two slits that are about a quarter of an inch tall. From the top edge down on your front pillow piece, you're going to mark three inches. I just folded it and placed a wonder clip to keep track of where that mark is. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the upper right hand side. On one end of your twine, tie a double knot and place it underneath the wonder clip. And we want it to stay in place, so put a pin in place to hold it. Lay your hearts right side up in the exact order you want them to be when your pillow is finished. Feed the twine from the back to the front and then to the back again for each of the hearts, aligning them up and laying them nice and flat on the front of your pillow. Once you get the hearts exactly where you want them, tie a double knot on the other end of your twine and secure it with a wonder clip in place and then go through and press each of the hearts on the front and the back of the front pillow. Make sure you use an open toe presser foot and a universal sewing needle. 
this will allow you to see the actual stitching that you're doing a lot easier. And all you're going to do is about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of each of the hearts, you're going to stitch all the way around the outside. Just take your time sinking the needle, rotating the material until you have it stitched all the way around the outside of the heart. All right, sewing bees, once you get the hang of that, repeat that for all of the hearts. Now tack down the twine on each side of the front pillow just by going forward and back a couple of times and making sure it's nice and secure. When you're finished stitching, go ahead and press the front of your pillow and then place the back pillow right sides together with the front and either pin or use Wonder Clips to secure the two pieces together. Now you are going to need to leave an opening and I often do this by marking it with double pins or double wonder clips. So make sure you leave at least a five to six inch opening at the bottom of the pillow so that you can turn it right side out. Now set the regular standard presser foot back up. And remember you're gonna leave about a six inch opening. Now sew with a half inch seam allowance and I'm gonna use the sew and fold method to sew my corners all the way around. What the sew and fold method is, is once you've stitched a seam, you fold the seam right on top of the stitch line, and then you stitch right over top of that following your seam allowance, which in this case is a half inch. And remember to leave an opening at the bottom of your pillow and backstitch at that opening. When you're finished sewing, it's time to turn your pillow right side out. And if you don't already have one of the Easy Point and Turners, definitely consider getting one for yourself. You'll find the link in the description below. When you're all finished turning your pillow right side out, give that opening a good press. And in fact, I like to press the outside edge of my pillow all around before I add my fiber fill. When you're adding fiber fill, don't just cram all of it inside your pillow. Take out little sections about the size of an orange and roll it into a ball and then start with the corners, tucking those little balls into the corners, making them nice and tight. Then fill your pillow up as full or as not full as you'd like. Close the little opening and secure it with some wonder clips. And then come back through with your hand stitching needle to close the opening. When you're all finished, make sure you have a nice tight knot at the end and give your pillow a little massage, spreading out that fiber fill evenly and one last press. Well, I really hope you enjoyed making these three Valentine's Day sewing projects. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can find more content like this in the future. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye.